Okay. Does it sound good? Yeah. Everybody can hear. So uh, I will I will basically continue on what has been presented before, uh, especially by Giovanni, and sort of extend to that to describe the transport properties of a uh, charge carrier. So I will I will talk about haul and drift mobility uh, using the uh, EW code. So so the idea as, as was presented before is that uh, when you apply an external electric field, the charge electron hole will start moving as a result of that applied uh, field and those charge will interact um, for example with the lattice so this is an intrinsic effect uh, electron on uh, matrix element but also if you have a lot of charge you can have ionized impurity if you have some defect you can have other forms of scattering um, in, in this talk i will really focus only on electron phonon scattering um, so just to be clear, uh, so uh, on Tuesday, Ivo Souza uh, also introduced uh, sort of conductivity and transport. And uh, he talked about linear ohmic and all anomalous all uh, conductivity. And then there was also this uh, second order term here. And so just to be to be clear, what I'm focusing on here is really this ohmic resistive term. And so I'm 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 basically treating or considering only systems that have transversal uh, symmetry. So if you, if you have, sorry, if you have broken transversal uh, uh, symmetry, then this is uh, uh, not zero, and then you have to compute it. Um, so, so here we really only focus on, on this first term. Um, so the <coughs> lift mobility is proportional to the carrier velocity times this change of occupation function uh, as a result of the applied electric field. So this is the out of equilibrium uh, uh, occupation function. And so to solve that, uh, and this sort of answers maybe um, uh, since in a uh, 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 question. So, so this is what, when you do derivation, and this derivation can be done from a manipulative framework, you can do a uh, certain approximation and get this iterative Boltzmann transport equation. So this is a linearized uh, iterative Boltzmann transport equation in which um, you compute this change of occupation as this first term, and this was the term that was presented by Giovanni, uh, except that here Giovanni had a constant uh, 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 relaxation time or lifetime or relaxation rate, but there is actually this other term, uh, which also uh, uh, is very important, and you can see that here you have the same quantity as here, but at different band and k points, and so the way to solve this is to solve it uh, iteratively, until you reach uh, convergence. And so this uh, uh, scattering rate between uh, electron and phonon is uh, given by this uh, formula where the G is the electron phonon matrix element, and then you have those uh, energy conservation conserving uh, uh, deltas. Um, but indeed, you can do uh, some approximation, and one of them is called the self-energy relaxation time approximation, in which you just choose to neglect this uh, second term. And then the mobility is much simpler. You just have this first term, which you can plug here, and then you get a, a simple expression for the drift mobility, uh, which where you plug this here, and then you have velocity, velocity, and then uh, this change of occupation function. But in this case, which is not f, it's f zero, so it's the Fermi Dirac distribution function as a, as a function of uh, uh, eigen energies. Um, now, in most experiments, uh, it's actually uh, easier to, to measure the mobility by uh, doing a whole experiment in which you apply an external magnetic field orthogonal to the sample, and then the electron will be deflected due to Lorentz force on one side of, of the device, and then you measure the, the, the change of voltage. Uh, however, in this case, you have an additional driving term because you have this additional magnetic field, and so you need to account for that. Um, and so basically now your your uh, new equation so this is the drift uh, uh, mobility that we just saw and and basically now the whole mobility will be the drift mobility multiplied by this whole factor note that the whole factor is in the limit of uh, vanishing magnetic field so the hat just indicates the direction of the magnetic field but not the magnitude and so in the limit of the vanishing field this whole factor is defined as this ratio between the 
mobility with the magnetic field and the one without the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. And so basically, you, you just need to extend this iterative Boltzmann transport equation that you saw before, and you just add this additional term uh, due to the magnetic field. And then this equation can be solved uh, again iteratively, again with the same uh, scattering rate. Okay, so in practice, and this has been shown, the idea is that you need to compute those transport properties on a very uh, a tiny energy region close to the bed edge or close to the Fermi level. And therefore, you, rely, you need to have a very dense K point and Q point grid in order to be converged. And so, one way to tackle this problem realistically is to compute all your quantity on a force grid. And then, of course, doing a, a, a Fourier or one year transform to real space. And then you can do a, a Fourier interpolation onto very dense grid. And in particular, the electron quantum matrix element is the quantity that PW uh, interpolates in a philosophy very similar to the 1 in 90 code. And indeed, PW uses 1 in 90 in library mode for some of the quantities. Um, so, just uh, uh, something I, I need to mention is that in polar material, um, you will have long range uh, non anticities and therefore um, the quantity will not be. You, you will not be able to uh, make them, uh, um, you know, um, condense in real space. And so the strategy, is, which is the same as the dynamical matrix, is to remove the long range uh, if you have an analytical expression for it, and then add it back once you've done the interpolation. And so there has been some recent development uh, in the field in which this long range term can be expanded into a multiple uh, series where you have dipole contribution, uh, quadrupole, octopole, and so on. And uh, until quite recently, uh, 2020, um, people were only using the dipole contribution to remove and add back this contribution. But it was shown that actually also quadrupole, and this was also presented by uh, Phil Chano, is uh, uh, something important. There is also an additional term of the same order in Q, which appears uh, here if you want to properly do the uh, uh, interpolation. So in gray, I'm, I'm putting some, I'm just flashing some input variable from uh, EPW, which you will need to set in order to activate those things. So when you put L polar in EPW, what it will do is it will, it will subtract this long range term. Um, and then there is no flag for quadrupole, but if there is a file with that exact name that contains the quadrupole tensor, then it will also add the quadrupole when it does this subtraction. Uh, and this is just to show that uh, in, in, in silicon, in principle, you have, it's, it's a non-polar material, so you wouldn't expect to have a fully um, dipole term, but you actually have a quadrupole one. And you can see that the electron quantum matrix element, um, which is computed on a coarse grid, maybe a 666 or something like this, no, it's written here, 12 for 12, uh, cannot be well interpolated if you don't uh, subtract this long range quadrupole and the circle are direct GFPT calculation, which are not part of the grid that you've used to do the uh, interpolation. And so in order to re recover those discontinuities, uh, uh, finite discontinuities that you have, uh, you, you really need to add this uh, uh, quadrupolar term. Um, so now I'm, I'm just going to give you a few tips that will be useful for the, for the hands-on. Um, so in general, the, the code scales as uh, square the number of uh, one yearized band. Therefore, you always want to minimize the number of one year function to the, to the bare minimum that you need. And so in general, it's much more efficient to treat the electron and the hole separately. So if you want to do a p doped or n-doped uh, uh, mobility or conductivity, it's better to just one yearize the, the valence band or the conduction band and then do the calculation on that than to do both of them at the same time. That would be more expensive than the sum of the two. Um, another thing, like I said, is that because of those um, energy conserving delta, so this is the Boltzmann transport equation, and all of those energy conserving delta corresponds to those four mechanisms in which you have an electron which uh, is in the state Nk and can absorb or emit uh, a phonon and go to the state Fnk or uh, vice versa. You have an electron that comes from Mk and goes into. So you have out and in by absorbing or emitting a phonon. Those are the four possibilities. 
And uh, as you can see from, I mean, the occupation function, uh, if they are the same sign, so for example, if this is one and this is one, then the resulting will be zero. So you always need to have one on the same, I mean, on, on each side. And uh, as a result, typically the contribution will be all only uh, the states that are very close to the band edge. And so there is a input variable, which is an F6 window, it's a window uh, for the state that you are considering in an EPW calculation. And this is a variable that you should converge on and you should take the smallest variable, the smallest F6, such that your results don't change. Um, if you want to do whole mobility, if you want to compute the whole factor, um, in principle, you should uh, also do a conversion, take a B field and, and then uh, make it as small as possible. The contribution, the contribution should linearly go to zero. So in the implementation, we compute the derivative with respect to field um, by finite difference, which means you can input a finite magnetic field. However, the theory is only valid in the uh, linear case. So you will not be able to describe a lambda level and, and so on. Uh, but you can describe some properties that find that field if you want. But the whole factor is defined in the limit that goes to zero. So if you don't want to do this conversion, just take a very small value. The, the unit of this is Tesla. So it's quite a big unit. So uh, like a reasonable value would be 10 to the minus 10, 10 to the minus 8, something like this. Uh, there's two implementation for the velocity. The velocity VME one year is the one that was presented by Giovanni. So this is using the this I mean, the, the, the one year scheme the same as in one year ninety, and then there is also a dipole, which I can explain what it is. Um, you can have different uh, broadening for the delta. You can have the Gaussian broadening and so on. But if you put zero, then it will use this adaptive broadening, um, which is quite convenient because uh, when you have a fixed broadening and then you uh, densify your grades, you will converge to a certain value, but then you have to also converge, I mean, decrease the smearing and converge again. And so if you do adaptive broadening, basically the smearing will decrease as you increase or densify your grid. And so you don't have to do any conversion with respect to smearing. Um, due to uh, numerical tests, it was found that it was more efficient to use uh, the same K point and Q point but the implementation allows you to have uh, grids that are commensurate, but they need to be commensurate because you are solving the iterative solution. So you need to be able to connect the K and the Q. Uh, so the grids need to be uh, themselves commensurate. Um, and so this is just to show you sort of the type of convergence that you can see. And in principle, you have to converge both the coarse grid on which you started to do the interpolation and also the fine grid. Um, and this is the convergence of the uh, whole factor in green. And on the right side, you have the mobility, and those are, are very small. But basically, what you can see is that this is an inverse uh, uh, scale, uh, so it's one over uh, 60 and so on. And as you progress to the left, you get more and more converged. Um, and so, yeah, those quantities sometimes converge quite uh, slowly, so you can also extrapolate if you want to uh, speed up the, the conversion. Um, I will now just show some results. So that, does this theory work? Do we reproduce experimental mobility? So the first thing I want, I want to say is that, in general, the whole factor is not one, and it's also temperature dependent. And so in many experimental studies, they assume the whole factor is one, and therefore they say that the intrinsic uh, mobility of a material so the drift intrinsic mobility is the same as the one we measure, but it's not always the case. So here, for example, you have some material in which the whole mobility increase with temperature, some of them in which they decrease, they say more or less constant. But you can see, you can also have a lower than one, which means that the whole mobility will be lower than the drift mobility. And so it's quite important to take this into account if you want to compare your result to whole mobility data. And so this is what uh, I've done here. So I'm comparing calculated mobility on the bottom versus uh, experimental mobility. Now, all, all of those are quite simple material, but I must say that some of them um, have been investigating very long time ago. And so maybe it would be worth to reinvestigate those simple material also experimentally. Uh, so in general, we overestimate the mobility and this is expected because the only scattering mechanism that we have is electron phonon scattering. But like, like I said, there are other scattering in an experiment, 
that can reduce uh, the mobility. So this is uh, uh, all the results for those 10 semiconductors in which I both have the electron and the whole mobility. And this is within this uh, self-energy relaxation time approximation. Uh, so uh, just to be clear, the self-energy relaxation time approximation is not the same as the constant time relaxation. Huh? The constant time you would have um, just a constant value. Here we don't have a constant value. It's just that we don't solve it iteratively. Um, and so I, I'm not showing it here, but with constant time uh, uh, relaxation, I think one would be completely off, uh, uh, to be honest. Um, then if you solve it iteratively, you have this iterative Boltzmann transport equation, and those are the uh, red results. And in that case, in, in general, the mobility increases, so getting a bit further away from uh, experiments. And then if you include also, if you compute and, and, and multiply by this whole factor, then in, in most cases, you increase a bit, even a bit more. And here you have the mean uh, absolute error and the mean relative error. So you can see that you increase. Uh, but this is what you expect. So you expect to overestimate, but that's it. So maybe there are still some approximation that could be lived. We could try to see if we can do better. But in general, what we find is that we overestimate experiment by something like a factor two uh, in some cases. Uh, then we can also look at uh, what are the dominant scattering mechanism. And so for that, we can plot the spectral decomposition. So this is the contribution as a function of uh, frequency. And so when you integrate on this, you get the scattering rate. And so you, you can see here that you have some material that are dominated by acoustic scattering. So this is the one you'd expect, huh? silicon, diamond, cubic boron nitride. Those are very stiff materials. So you would expect uh, uh, acoustic scattering. And then you have uh, materials like germ arsenide, aluminum arsenide, and so on, which are optical <coughs> scattering dominated, huh? so, and sometimes uh, very strongly. So I've shown a general framework to compute the uh, drift and hole mobility based on the Boltzmann transport equation, which can be derived from uh, many body framework. And uh, I've also studied what I haven't shown here in, in very detail, but the, the role of different approximations for the velocity, uh, the role of including or neglecting quadrupole, uh, in some case can be uh, important. Uh, spin orbit coupling in general, it's important for whole mobility, but not so much for electron mobility. And the, re the reason is that you have uh, a splitting of the uh, degeneracy uh, in the valence band. So even for silicon, you have 50 millieV splitting. And because the transport properties occurs, you know, very close to the band edge, maybe 200 millieV from the band edge, if you start having splittings due to spin orbit coupling, then this impacts the mobility. And so in general, for uh, p uh, uh, you know, mobility or conductivity, you always want to have spin orbit coupling. Um, okay, so this is just a, a, a list uh, of uh, current EPW team members. So, so Fred Chano uh, started this uh, journey with his uh, a paper and then uh, starting implementing the code. And then Roxana Margin uh, joined and, and worked on the superconductivity, and then I joined and so on. And, and the team is growing, and so maybe. In the future, you can also uh, participate to this uh, electron forum uh, uh, journey. And if you want more information, uh, this is the website. We have a forum. Um, it's also part of the Quantum Espresso distribution. So if you download Quantum Espresso, you will have EPW uh, included. Uh, and here are some uh, references. And uh, that's it. So if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer. For watching on the Zoom in case. Yeah. Ah, you want the. I wanted to ask about the um, benchmark data. So to which extent the result is sensitive to the choice of the change correlation functionals? Uh, because uh, you know the, the gap is underestimated, then maybe effective masses could not be right. So um. yeah, so so here is is, is basically the impact uh, in the, so the relative effect on the mobility. I'm going to use my oh, but this I, one uh, okay. <laughs> 
Okay, so th thanks for the question. Um, so, yeah, so basically here we, we, we looked at basically all the possible approximation that we, we could compute and the effect on, 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 uh, on the mobility. So this is the relative effect. This is at the end of Kelvin. And so all the dots and the, and the squares are both for the electron and the hole for the, for the 20 possible uh, material. Um, and then the strongest approximation is this local velocity approximation, which I haven't talked about. Then you have dipoles, you know, the coupling, SERTA, and so on. Uh, 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 lattice. So lattice is the difference between the experimental lattice and the PBE lattice, which was the choice for, for this. But then we also looked at LDA. So this is the choice between LDA and PBE. And this is the, so it's not so, so big, huh? so uh, 0.04. And then this is the uh, change that we uh, see for different pseudo potential with the same exchange correlation functional. So this is uh, using different uh, pseudo potential laboratories. So you can see that in general, uh, the, the last here are relatively small, I would say, but it's also true that I didn't test, uh, let's say, uh, meta GGA or other uh, exotic uh, functionals. Uh, I mean, things like, of course, GW and so on will have a bigger effect, but at least I would say PBE, PBE, so LDA, I mean, the standard one, the effect is not too big. Does that answer the question? No? Yes? I know that, for instance, the gallium mass negative the mass will be a factor of two or three wrong uh, for the conduction band if yeah. we use. So, so that would propagate right into the solution somehow. Uh, correct. Uh, in fact, uh, so of all those materials, uh, indeed, the electron mobility of gallium arsenide is extremely sensitive because it's quite wrong in DFT. It's super small, it's 0 0.05 or something. Mm -hmm. And so for this one and for this study, we use the experimental effective mass just for the electron of gallium arsenide. So this is explained in the paper, but because it was extremely sensitive indeed. So this will, will completely, but I think it's a bit of an extreme case uh, with a very small bang up, completely underestimated, very high effective mass. Uh, indeed, that, that's an issue, yeah. So, so you, you may, maybe a suggestion would be then to use some more accurate theory for the effective mass and then use more like a, faster theory for the rest of the calculation. So would that work for work? Uh, yes, in a way. So so this is something not in this study, but that, that we've done before uh, is, for example, to compute the effective mass with GW. Uh -huh. uh, but actually, the GW in many cases doesn't change too much the effective mass. Uh, and, and I think, but in fact, this is a very good point is that uh, in DFP or GW, they don't do an extremely good job at describing the effective mass in general uh, compared to experiment. So, so even silicon, I think if I remember the, the heavy hole in the one, one, one direction is wrong by a factor two. In DFT, GW, everything compared to experiment. And so uh, I think people don't you know, look enough at that issue. So this is a real issue that in some material, the effective mass is, is really badly predicted, yes. And so, of course, this one will have an effect, a strong effect of, on mobility. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we need to indeed try to improve the effective mass. That's a good point. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So the mass is wrong even with GW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that particular. Huh? So like. And this is type of source. Sorry. So this uh, second uh, source of this media. Type hole. Can you tell a little bit more about what is the situation like? Oh no! This this was neglecting of uh, of, of quadrupole, if you want. Huh? So it's only using dipole when I do this uh, long range subtraction. So if I use only dipole and not dipole plus quadrupole. Oh no! Sorry, I actually wanted to ask the first one. Oh, local velocity. Okay, okay, yes. So so I haven't talked about that um, because before in EPW there was a third option for the velocity, and that was the velocity in the local approximation. So it's basically computing the velocity but neglecting. The non-local part of the, the non-local part of the pseudo potential contribution, and this was because then it's much easier to compute. And this was the original implementation, but it's an approximation. And since now we've implemented with the non-local part and with one year, there is no reason to use this one. So we are not providing this option anymore. And this is to show that it's bad <laughs> somehow. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it possible that the uh, in GW that uh, Man, electromagnetic is wrong because it's not the electrophone interaction. Do you do that in here? You know, like 
Microphone interaction would sure. change. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So th that's a very good point, indeed. So the real part of the electron phonon self energy will renormalize the band structure. Okay. Huh? This is completely true. Uh, so in the case of silicon, this band renormalization is quite small. I think it changed the effective mass by 0 0.03 or something like that. Uh, but it could be that in some materials, the change is bigger. In general, the main change is uh, an opening of the bank up. So this is called the zero point uh, motion renormalization. And so the, the bank up opens with temperature. There are some, uh, sorry, closed. In general, it closes with temperature. But there are some material in which it opens. But in most material, the bank up will uh, close. Uh, this is the zero point motion. And as you increase temperature, it will close even more. Uh, and of course, this is K point dependent. So this could uh, change, of course, the um, the effective mass. And this is the mass enhancement factor that we've uh, seen before. So it depends on the material, I guess, uh, this answer. Yeah. And also, I think you could uh, reach that from the behavior of ability to temperature, because if it's if the, the, the difference between computer that measures mobility is due to the factor, then it will be the difference will be temperature dependent. If it's due to the impurity, then it should be K constant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And, and I mean, I should, yeah, I should emphasize that basically, I, I think at least like this one, I mean, there's one or two material where in particular, I think this one, maybe this one, where, I mean, the experiment is from the 70s and I found only one paper and I mean, I, I wouldn't rely too much on, I mean, it could be simply that the experiment needs to be redone and yeah, or it's not very pure and things like that. Um, so we would need to investigate those material more. But in general, we, we sort of overestimate uh, uh, quite systematically. I don't know if, ah, yeah, so here uh, you can see. So this is the temperature, the change to the reduction of mobility, uh, both electron and hole. As you increase the temperature, uh, this is not on a log scale. Uh, so you see these things. And uh, yeah, the dots are all the experiments. Uh, but you see, I mean, for uh, what was it? Yeah, you only have one. Uh, I don't remember this one. You know, it's a six. 69, 83, and I couldn't find them. Maybe they are, but I couldn't find more recent uh, experiments. So in general, they are quite, you see, they are quite uh, old. So I would really hope, I mean, I would really like if an experimentalist re reinvestigate those things with uh, high purity and, and so on. Um, but I think that would be very valuable uh, to, to sort of benchmark our, our theory a bit better. Yeah. Okay, so if there is no more question, I think we can start with the first tutorial. So uh, at the entrance, you will see that there is two uh, sets of uh, um, uh, tutorials uh, in, in paper format. So if you haven't already uh, taken them, just go at the entrance and take one. So the reason we printed it is that we, we found that it's quite useful. You can write on it and uh, also you can, you can log in and then just follow the, the instruction. Um, and so, yeah, um, Roxana will, will start the, the first tutorial and, and we'll, we'll do it with you. And I will, if you have a specific issue, you can raise your hand and I will, I will come. And uh, yeah, that's it. So you, you can all start with the, the superconductivity tutorial. Okay. So this, 